Number 28. Stokes' law describes sedimentation of particles and liquids and can be used to measure viscosity. Particles and liquids achieve terminal velocity quickly. Uh, one can measure the time it takes for a particle to fall a certain distance and then use Stokes' law to calculate the viscosity of the liquid. So suppose a steel ball bearing of density 7.8 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed, diameter of 3 millimeters, is dropped in a container of motor oil. It takes uh, 12 seconds to fall a distance of 0.6 meters. Calculate the viscosity of the oil. All right. So first thing is, let's start with uh, Stokes' law, okay? And I'm going to detail it. So it says that the force that opposes the motion is equal to 6 times pi times the uh, viscosity, right? Uh, times the radius. That's a weird little shape there. Sorry about that. Times the viscosity times the uh, radius of the object then times the velocity. Okay, so we're calculating this by using terminal velocity. So remember, if I'm calculating it using terminal velocity, I know that this particular force that opposes the, mo that opposes the motion will be equal to mg of the object, okay? That we've talked about in detail in other questions. So 6 pi times the viscosity times the radius times the terminal velocity. Now our job is to find the uh, viscosity. So to find that, let's divide everything on out all right, so let's divide the 6 pi r and the terminal velocity, okay, over to the other side, r v sub t. And now what do we get? We get a value of where the uh, viscosity will now equal the mass of the object multiplied by gravity divided by 6 times pi times the radius times the terminal velocity. So this tells me now, right, that in order to calculate my viscosity, I need to know all the variables. So what do we know? Let's take it one by one. Do we know the mass? Uh, no. Okay. So we, we got to calculate that first, right? So we don't know the mass, um, but we have to take the information that's given in the problem to see if we can calculate the mass. So they tell us it is a steel ball bearing. So remember, it's going to be spherical. And they tell us the diameter of that sphere. So the diameter of that sphere, that's not exactly straight, uh, is going to be three millimeters. Okay. Three millimeters. If that's the diameter, guys, what's the radius? Just half, right? So it's half a three, 1.5. Okay, so 1.5 millimeters would be the radius. I don't like millimeters. I, well, I don't have anything personally against millimeters, but in terms of the calculations, uh, we like to have things in meters, okay? That's the standard unit. So what I need to do here is take 1.5 millimeters and just I'm just gonna convert it right away to uh, meters, all right? So millimeters on the bottom, meters on the top, a thousand millimeters to one meter, cancel that. So then we get 0 0.0015 meters. All right, so that's the value in meters. Okay, great. Uh, now, where can we go from here? Well, uh, what's the significance of this? Well, they did tell us the density of the ball bearing, right? They did tell us the density. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, well, why did they tell me the density? Let me think of the, what the formula tells me. Density is equal to mass over volume. Oh, wait, if I'm looking for mass and I know the density, and somehow I either know or can find the volume, then I can find my mass. So my question now becomes not what's the mass, but what's the volume? That's the question. So what's the volume? We're dealing with a sphere. What's the formula for volume of a sphere? It's gonna be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Great, we do know the radius, so we can calculate this, right? So it's 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed is 0 0.0015 and cube that thing. So now we got the volume being, 4 over 3 times pi times 0 0.0015 raised to the third. And we got 1.41. So we have 1.41 times 10 to the negative 8, and that's in cubic meters. Great. I like that because now I can calculate the mass. So I'm going to use the density they gave me back to the right-hand side. 7.8 times 10 to the third is going to equal the mass of the object divided by now the volume, which we just found to be 1.41 times 10 to the negative 8. So simply cross multiply, and we can find now the mass. So 7.8 times 10 to the third times 1.41 times 10 to the negative 8, and that gives me a value of 1.10, 1.10 times 10 to the negative fourth, so negative 4. Okay, and that is in kilograms. Great, so that is the mass. Okay, so I do know the mass, check. Next, do I know gravity? Yes, 9.80, check. 
Do I know six? Yeah, it's six. Do I know pi? Yeah, it's 3.14. Do I know the radius of the object? Uh, I do, right? I just found it before. Be careful, you have to use all the meter value, right? So we do know the radius, 0 0.0015 meters. And last question, do we know the terminal velocity? Uh, I don't know it yet, but they must have given me enough information to calculate it. So let's see, what did they give us? Let's go back to the question. So they said that it's dropped in a container of motor oil and it takes 12 seconds to fall a distance of uh, 0.6 meters, okay? So here's the thing, and they also tell us that it achieves terminal velocity quickly. Now, to know when it achieves the terminal velocity and all this, I don't. We, we're not going to go into that much depth here. They're they're telling us it achieves it relatively quickly. So what I'm going to assume that it basically achieves it right away. Is that reasonable or not? I mean, there'll be a small margin of error here. I, I mean, excuse me, there'll be a small amount of error here. Um, but you know, it shouldn't make that tremendous uh, an amount of difference. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assume that the um, the steel ball bearing is traveling at this terminal velocity the whole time. Now, if I do that, that means that in order for this right ball bearing to cover 0 0.6 meters from start to finish, all right, and it takes a time, by the way, this is Y, right? And if it takes a time of 12 seconds, can I simply just find the velocity? If I assume it's traveling at a constant velocity the whole time, sure. Velocity is equal to d over t, right? So the velocity is going to be equal to the distance or the displacement that it traveled, which was 0.6 meters, all over the time it took 12 seconds. So the terminal velocity here, or the average velocity, which is the terminal velocity in this case, would be 0.6 divided by 12, so 0.05. So 0 0.05, and that's meters per second. There's my terminal velocity now, okay? So I got all the pieces I need. Let's just plug it all in. All right, so the viscosity here will be equal to the mass. That was 1.10 times 10 to the minus 4. Gravity was 9.80. 6 pi, the radius was 0 0.0015. Right, and then the terminal velocity we just found to be 0 0.05. Okay, so what's the viscosity? Just plug it on in. So 1.1 times 10 to the negative 4th times 9.8. Take that value and divide it by the entire denominator. So 6 times pi times 0 0.0015 times 0 0.05. And we get a value of 0 0.763. 763. And the units here are kilogram per meter second. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. That would be awesome. And I look forward to helping you out with your next question. Until then.